People in general have certain traits that are fairly consistent. One is that they want the chance to live a comfortable life. Another is that they usually have good hearts and a generous nature, thinking of others as well as themselves. The most consistent trait which I have spotted though, is that they want their leaders to act like adults. This last trait is worth discussing, because people across the country can name at least one of America's elected leaders who is acting like a child right now. The politics of Washington have become ever more divisive, and while there is blame enough to share, who's really driving this trend? Hmm, sounds like it's time for some roasted opinions. Let's review, shall we? The federal government is divided into three branches, the legislative, the executive, and the judiciary. The judiciary isn't really known for childish behavior at the uppermost levels. The structure of this branch has a strict meritocracy designed into it. That doesn't mean that childish behavior cannot be found, of course, it just means that childish behavior tends to surface in the circuit courts at the lower levels, preventing further promotion for those justices. Every federal judge must be approved by the Senate. Every appellate nominee must face a separate nomination and approval. Every Supreme Court justice faces approval yet again, and while appellate justices may not serve on the circuit courts first, Supreme Court justices nearly always serve as appellate justices first. There's only one Supreme Court Associate Justice currently serving who has not served in a federal appeals court. The judiciary branch is not, therefore, likely to be a source of childish behavior at the uppermost levels. The executive branch, however, is led by the president. In all cases but one, the president has been a person with some experience in government. All but three have previously held elected or appointed offices, and two of those three that haven't have been generals. President Trump is remarkable in that prior to his election, he had never held office and had never served in uniform. He is, for lack of a better word, an amateur when it comes to politics in Washington. Donald Trump is also known for his personality. A real estate developer and venture capitalist by trade, he has built and lost several fortunes. His personality could best be described as pure alpha male. He knows precisely what he wants and expects to get it. His demands are often denied or delayed, but in all honesty, he has rarely been thwarted and even then, not for long. When he came to the White House, he may have expected that he could restructure entrenched bureaucracy and partisan politics quickly in order to create an environment in which he could dictate what was going to happen in the country. Two years in, he's still trying to tear down those established structures. Change the parallel world that is Washington, D.C. quickly? Um, no. Just, no. The judiciary may be filled with generally mature individuals, and the executive is subordinate to the president and therefore within his reach to make changes. But the Congress is most decidedly not either of these. Two houses directly elected by the people they represent stand up to President Trump. He campaigned on taking down the Washington establishment. They are that establishment in many ways. Case in point. The average length of prior service in the House for the current members of the House of Representatives is 8.6 years. The average length of prior service in the Senate for current senators is 10.1 years. Additionally, 49 of the current 100 senators have previous service in the House, bringing the total average service in Congress as a whole for senators up by 4.6 years. The average senator has occupied a seat in Congress, one House or another, for about 14.7 years. Congressional leadership, on average, has been there much longer. In some cases, they have occupied a seat for more than 40 years. Representative Don Young has occupied his seat in the House for 46 years. Senator Patrick Leahy has served for 44 years in the Senate. These two represent the members of each House who have served the longest as of the 116th Congress. Speaker Pelosi has over 30 years of service in the House. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has served two years longer than Pelosi in the Senate. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer has 20 years of service in the Senate. 
plus 18 years before that in the House. Because of the structure of congressional elections, there really isn't a time when a third of the Senate and all of the members of the House are not campaigning for re-election. Election cycles last two years, after all. Trust me, I grew up in Iowa, and in between the midterm election in November and the start of the next Congress the following January, the next round of people interested in occupying the White House and Congress start forming exploratory committees. The first act of a member of the House in each session is to send their campaign managers out to start fundraising for the next election in two years. Now let's couple that with lobbying firms in Washington. Hmm. There are over 12,500 lobbyists in Washington. They operate out of hundreds of firms. Some of them are permanently dedicated to certain issues and agendas, while others are effectively hired guns selling their considerable contacts with members of Congress to the highest bidder. Some lobbyists advocate, and some donate to re-election campaigns. Both of these expressions are constitutionally protected free speech, so long as campaign finance laws are followed. The lobbyists have their jobs because they can influence votes in Congress. Some firms even specialize in influencing presidential policy in order to change agency regulations. What the lobbyists and the elected officials they meet with don't want is for the Washington press corps to go crawling all over them, searching for signs of influence peddling. The press corps would rather take down an elected official, especially since the heady days of Woodward and Bernstein, than reveal the shady activities of lobbying firms. Anyone who upsets the apple cart can expect a slowdown in campaign contributions and a series of stories about their particular skeletons, and for the most part in the past, that has worked. It's not working against Trump, though, is it? Presidential agendas usually only bear a passing resemblance to the campaign promises made by the candidate. Trump's agenda, however, looks just like his campaign promises. In 2016, I honestly expected that he would compromise on his campaign goals, just like every other president I have known has done. I even said so to some of my friends. Some of those people are no longer my friends because of this. Mitch McConnell and other Republicans tossed out a sea anchor to slow down Trump's agenda during the 115th Congress because of the storms raised by Pelosi, Schumer, and the Washington establishment. I think that McConnell was worried that the Trump agenda would capsize and take the GOP with it. Over time, though, Mitch has come around, as has most of the GOP. Trump is loud, blunt, sometimes obnoxious, and definitely no respecter of just the way things are done in Washington. But he does have a plan, and he is demonstrating strong leadership. Maybe not the leadership that everybody wants, but strong leadership nonetheless. The 116th Congress was convened with a new crop of Democrats taking the majority in the House. Nancy Pelosi was back in the Speaker's chair. She immediately dug in, together with Chuck Schumer, to bring Trump to a screeching halt. Yet it doesn't seem to be working very well, does it? Trump has stated that he is content to keep the government closed until the border wall issue is resolved. Speaker Pelosi told him to his face that there would be no funding for the border wall at all. In response, Trump walked out of the meeting. Cries of, He's being childish! echoed down the National Mall. Is he the only one, though? The National Press Corps just spent an entire day trumpeting a bombshell report that Trump instructed his former lawyer, Michael Cohen, to lie to investigators. BuzzFeed certainly fed the buzz, except that the story contains no evidence whatsoever, has been refuted by the investigators themselves, and was written by a journalist who has repeatedly lost his job for falsifying sources when writing stories. Sounds pretty childish to me. Pelosi issued a letter published in the press telling Trump that he could not give the State of the Union address to Congress because of the shutdown. She then attempted to leave the country for a week. Trump canceled her military transportation and suggested she fly commercial, again because of the shutdown. She then clapped back by claiming that he jeopardized her safety by revealing commercial travel plans. There's a whole sequence of childishness there for you. The government is fast approaching an entire month of partial shutdown because no one will budge or even negotiate over $5.7 billion for the border wall. Negotiating and deal-making are exactly the skill sets and expertise of both Trump and the Washington establishment. And yet there are no negotiations. 
childish. Around $2 trillion of appropriations are gathering dust in Congress because the President asked for a single $5.7 billion appropriation. 800,000 federal employees are either furloughed or working without pay during the shutdown because of that single appropriation, which Congress will not grant despite their records of writers, amendments, and out-and-out congressional pork. The economy is being held back, GDP growth is being slowed, and important trade and even disarmament negotiations with foreign governments are being interrupted because Donald wants the wall funding that the previous Congress promised him and the Democrat leadership suddenly decided that increasing border security by extending the wall is immoral. Unlike 10 years ago when the same Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi said that $50 billion absolutely had to be spent to build a border wall between the U.S. and Mexico. Trump is asking for about 11.4% of what was acceptable to Pelosi and Schumer just a decade ago. And Chuck and Nancy are publicly refusing to make a deal with him. They insist on blaming him for the shutdown, too. To me, at least, that seems much more childish, especially when the Senate Majority Leader plainly stated that no appropriations bills would go forward unless the President would sign them. Yet this entire sequence of events arose from the 115th Congress's inability to pass the 2019 budget on time, despite the fact that the GOP controlled both houses. Since early November, Speaker Ryan knew that the GOP would lose the House in January. But instead of hurrying the budget through to the Oval Office, he and the outgoing members decided to continue not doing their job. Incidentally, that's the reason that the House and the Senate have changed hands repeatedly over the last couple of decades. Because the elected members of Congress continue to draw an enviably high salary to do nothing. That's why the Oval Office has become a repository of powers not granted to it by the Constitution. Because we the people have elected the most childish people that we could find for the last couple of decades who are constitutionally incapable of doing their jobs. That's right, kids. I blame the current childish behavior in Washington on two decades of us playing the indulgent parents with our elected officials letting them keep their jobs despite the tantrums they have thrown. We created this mess. Ultimately, I think that we should own up to our responsibility and get busy reminding our representatives in Congress that if they don't knock off this childish behavior and get to work, that we, the people, will invoke the recall mechanisms which we have available to us, bring them back home from Washington, and send replacements who will do the job we elected them to do. Now that's just my opinion, comment below to share yours. If you like this video, check out my playlists. Check out these channels I have subscribed for more great content. New episodes are coming, so subscribe and ring the bell.